In today's episode of the podcast, I'll be sharing with you four works in progress and some special new acquisitions, some of which coming from my trip to Knit Dallas. So grab something cozy to drink and maybe even your knitting and let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands and Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I'm coming to you today from a really lovely sunny day, but it's very cold here in Henderson, Nevada in the Southwest United States where I live with my husband, Brandon, and our two little boys, Angus and Ronan, as well as our dog, Pepper, and our cat, Oscar. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. And if you're a returning viewer and subscriber, welcome back. It's so lovely to be here with you guys today. I have a lot to share. It has been about three weeks since I filmed a proper podcast where I've been sharing um, progress on all of the things I've been working on. I've been here, you've seen me a lot lately, but I, I've had, it's been a while since I've done like a proper podcast where I've shared my, um, my whips with you. And I'm excited to share them with you today because I have new ones that you guys have not seen yet and I've made some good progress on those. Plus we are just returning, well, we've been back for a week now, but we just returned from our trip to Dallas where we visited my brother and sister-in-law and their two little girls. And while I was there, we got to go to Knit Dallas, my sister-in-law and myself, and this yarn shop was fabulous. And so I do have some things that I purchased while I was there. So I'm really excited to share all of this with you guys today. And I can't think if there's anything else I wanna cover. Oh, regarding fiber for the people, my hand dyed yarn business, there is a shop update this Saturday. And it's going to be a really special update because I'm going to be featuring a line of yarn that has been in the making for a long time. It's a very special, um, it's not gonna be a one-time run. I'll have more updates with this yarn until that yarn is gone. But it's an experiment that I'm working on with some breed specific yarn from Arizona. This is 100% Arizona Tunis yarn. It is a really beautiful rustic wool. I'll talk a lot more about this over on the Instagram for Fiber for the People. Here's a look at the yarn up close. This is dyed in my saffron colorway. All the colorways going into the update on Friday, or excuse me, on Saturday are going to be inspired by the Arizona desert as a nod to where these um, sheep are that produced this really gorgeous yarn. So that is coming to the shop Saturday. Fiber for the People. You can learn all about it over on fiberforthepeople.com or on Instagram. Everything's linked down below, but definitely check it out Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, now I'm ready to dive in to what I've been working on. Okay, the first thing I wanna share with you is what I worked on um, on the plane ride over to Texas for the most part. This was like exclusive plane knitting. I did a little bit while we were there, um, but while we were there, I worked more on another project that you've heard me talk a lot about and I'll talk more about it later, but this was primarily airplane knitting. Now I have mild, it flying anxiety. I just, it creeps me out. I, I, I enjoy it when I'm in the air and everything's, you know, good and all of that turbulence kind of really bugs me a little bit. Um, taking off and landing are the worst <laughs> for me and, and not like anything super major, but usually I just need something to keep my hands busy to help keep me calm or listen to something whatever. So there's lots of that <laughs> flight anxiety and maybe a little bit of palm sweat knit into these socks that I'm sharing with you now. So these are just a pair. Actually, I was about to say these are just a pair of vanilla socks. And yes, they are essentially vanilla socks in that they are stockinette stitch socks, but they are not. I'm following the pattern by Kate Atherley called One Sock, I believe. I'll link to it down below. Kate Atherley is lovely when it comes to determining how to knit a pair of vanilla socks, like to how to create your own sock recipe. And I will link to an article that she wrote for Knitty 101 um, or for, that she wrote for Knitty Magazine online called Sock Knitting 101. I'll link to it down below so that you can read it because it helps you kind of create your own sock formula. However, what I'm using here is an actual pattern you can download on Ravelry that walks you through the same Thing. I'll link to both of them down below. So this is the One Sock by Kate Atherley, and I'm knitting these using Patton's Croy. Now, if you um, were watching when I did my Socks by Christmas knit along, the winner of that knit along was using this gorgeous turquoisey green striping yarn, and I commented on it when I showed the socks on the podcast about how beautiful this yarn was. And I didn't know exactly what um, colorway she was using or really even what no, I knew it was Patton's Croy, but I didn't know what colorway it was. And then I found it at Michael's. So 
well, I think I did. I don't know for sure, but I think I found it at Michael's because I think that's what this is. So if you were watching the podcast, you might recall, but this is what I think she was using. And I thought it was beautiful at the time. And I think it's beautiful now. It's just such a cool combination of colors for the stripes. And that's, um, I want to be able to show you a little bit more, but I got to pull some of this yarn out so I don't knock things over. There's a wrapper for special K pastry bar that must have been a snack for my son or one of my boys on the airplane. That's always nice. The, okay, here we are. So yeah, these are for my dad. Again, the one sock by Kate Atherley. And I'm really enjoying working on these. It's Patton's Croy. It's the turquoise stripes colorway. I'm knitting these on right now currently a size one and a half needle. And then I knit the cuff on a size one. And that's as per the instructions um, for the pattern by Kay Atherley. And I love that. I love a cuff that's knit on one size down from the remainder of the sock. I feel like it really hugs the cuff in nicely. You can see that there's a narrowing out that happens right here. I really love that. I also wanted to make sure that I knit a wider cuff or a deeper cuff for my dad. I know, I feel like men's socks, and I don't know why men's socks need to be any more functional than a woman's sock. It really isn't, doesn't need to be that way. However, I feel like, okay, here's a weird theory. Men typically have hair on their legs, okay? And I think that that can cause socks to kind of like wiggle down, you know, because there's like hair is slippery. I don't, is this gross? Maybe this is gross. But I wanted to make sure, whatever, whatever my theory is, I wanted to make sure that his socks stayed up just because I think that's important. And I know that a deeper cuff can help make that happen. So I wanted to give him a really nice, generous, deep cuff here. And it's super nice and stretchy and I like it. And then the body of the sock is here. Now here's an issue. No, it's not an issue. It's just kind of a discovery that I've made about Patton's Croy. And I guess I should have known this going into it because I can see the yarn. Um, Patton's Croy is not fingering weight when you're comparing it to fingering weight yarn that you buy from like an indie dyer or a sock yarn company or anything like that. It's definitely a sport weight. And I'll even show you um, one of the cakes right here so you can see. I don't know if you can tell, but that is, um, that's a heavier weight yarn. I don't have, a, you know what? Let me grab, I'm going to grab a sock yarn that comes from like, a, like I'll grab fiber for the people, a sock yarn from my own company and show you a comparison because it's, it's a noticeable difference. Okay, so this is a cake of yarn that I actually um, frogged. I frogged part of a sock. So it's got the little like ramen noodle coils to it. So let's see, how can I do this? The best without making everything just like fall all over the place. Okay. So we have two strands, one strand, then the teal strand is obviously the patents and the other is fiber for the people. So I don't, can you tell there, um, the fiber for the people fingering weight yarn up here, that's like purpley pinky with the speckles going on. That is a typical four ply sock yarn. And then the patents croy below that in the teal, that's, you know, kind of more of like a sport weight yarn. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but you could take my word for it. It is definitely a heavier sock yarn. And to be honest with you, for a men's a man's sock or for a sock that you really want to be sturdy and um, you know stand the test of time and all of that wear, that's fantastic because the dense fabric just feels super sturdy, super resilient, not likely to. Um, to wear open into holes. I really love it. I just, I love the, what is the word that I'm looking for? Substantial fabric that it creates. It's really nice. However, because it tends to be a heavier yarn, the socks are knitting up larger than I expected. So I went, I measured my dad or had my dad measure so that I could fill in, you know, stitch counts based on the pattern not considering that this yarn is heavier than a, a standard fingering weight yarn. And I didn't gauge swatch because it's a sock and I'm, I've knit enough socks to feel confident about it. But had I gauge swatched, I would have known that I needed to size down because the yarn is going to make for a larger sock, which it absolutely is. And I had my dad um, try on what I had so far and I could tell it was gonna be big. And so what I'm doing now, instead of ripping all of this progress out, because it wasn't, it wasn't a deal breaker, because if I knit the leg of the sock long enough, I have room 
to narrow it down. So the, the higher up you go on a man's, on anybody's leg, it's going to get wider and narrow down to the ankle. So I'm kind of taking advantage of that shape to narrow the sock down to where I need it to be so that it fits his foot nicely. So right now I'm in the process of shaping the sock, kind of tapering the sock in. And I don't know if you can see those little decreases happening right there. Um, I'm, I know I'm, I should have done them on the sides, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. But I'm decreasing the sock down, narrowing it down to what would be a 58 stitch sock, which seems really small for a man's leg. But because this yarn is heavy, it actually seems to be like what I need um, for my dad's legs. So I don't know. And as I go, I'll just keep checking. Right now I'm at a 64 stitch um, and I'm just gradually decreasing as I go. But that's where I'm at with these is kind of figuring out how far to decrease to fit his legs. So I'll have to have him try them on again. But ultimately, these are socks for my dad. I'm making good progress on these. I really enjoy knitting them. I love this yarn. If you want a really good substantial sock yarn, it's it's a 75-25 blend of wool and nylon. It's not merino wool, so it's not super soft, which is a good thing because that means, number one, it's resistant to pilling. Number two, it's resistant to wear much more so than merino. I feel personally... And maybe this is an unpopular opinion. I feel that Merino is not a great yarn for socks. I just, from what I know about Merino, it's just too soft. The micron count is too low. I also think it's really important to have nylon in the sock yarn. Not all the yarn that I use for socks has nylon, as you'll see later on down the road, um, but it does help. So I don't know, just some thoughts on sock yarn. Maybe that's like a whole video all to itself. But I love this yarn. I love it for knitting socks. It's definitely sturdy, substantial, and it's really enjoyable to work with. I think that sometimes because it tends to be a little bit on the heavy side, if you're using like really small needles, like a size one or a one and a half, you might notice a little bit of hand fatigue because the stitches are just um, not tighter. There's just more yarn within the stitch. And so sometimes that can be cumbersome on your hands. But ultimately, I really love that. So those are my socks for my dad, patterned by Kate Atherley, and I'll link to it down below. Okay, this next uh, project here is one that I'm doing for my mom. My mom has expressed an interest in a pair of fire pit mitts, um, which is a pattern by yours truly. You can find it linked down below. I've talked a lot about the fire pit mitts. They're my go-to fingerless mitten. I wear them all the time, especially almost every day. No, I wear them every single day right now because I walk Pepper every single day and I put them on when I take Pepper out for a walk. They're lovely. I'll pop a picture up so you can see my fire pit mitts, but definitely worth checking out. Okay, so these are for my mom. I am using Fiber for the People yarn and I'm doing a pairing of mohair and uh, BFL. So this is Blueface Luster DK weight yarn with a strand of kid mohair silk in the Jupiter colorway. So the base yarn that I'm using here is the saffron colorway, which is the same as what you see in this yarn I showed earlier. It's this really pretty burnt orange. And then the yarn going over the top of that is mohair in the Jupiter colorway. And I don't know why there's grass in the bottom of my project bag, but this is called Jupiter and it's mostly a deep black. It almost has like a blue undertone to the black. And then there's um, portions of the yarn that are dyed in a beautiful array of colors. And those two paired together create a really cool, like rustic looking color all over. And that was my intention. So I wanted something with like a Southwest vibe, something rustic and lovely. And that's what it looks like paired together. And you can't really tell, at least I don't think you can um, from your vantage point, but the Jupiter mohair that's being paired with that orange has bits of teal and pink and turquoise. And it's really beautiful. And you can see that kind of in, you know, marling itself in the fabric every so often and it's really pretty and then this real light part right here is like a silvery color it's just it's very cool it's super interesting it's gonna make for a really cool kind of wear with anything color to be honest i feel like even though this isn't technically a neutral it's just a color that i think you could throw on with anything you're wearing kind of like a nice compliment to whatever you're wearing so that is going to be fire pit mitts for my mom and I'm, I'm really loving these. And uh, you may have noticed, <laughs> I'm knitting all of these tubular items two at a time. That is my preferred method. I am enjoying every moment of it. 
when I first started knitting two at a time, which was about four years ago, five, no, it was like when I first started the podcast, um, it wasn't that great. It took me some time to get comfortable with it. And then I just kind of abandoned it. And I recently started doing it again and I love it. I actually look forward to having socks. I know that I'll finish them. If you want to learn more about my thoughts on knitting two at a time, I'll link to a video down below. It was one I put out uh, about three videos ago. I definitely recommend giving that a listen if you're interested in um, knitting two at a time and you want some additional thoughts on that. So I'll link to that down below, but that is my preferred method for these small, narrow tubular items. And even for things that are not tubular, but that are small, like washcloths, for example, I'm knitting a set of washcloths right now, two at a time. And it just makes it go by, I don't know if, I mean, I feel like it goes by faster. I just feel like it's more efficient, my thoughts. But you know, take it from, take from that what you will. Okay, this is one that I am calling affectionately my Franken sweater. And I'm actually probably going to abandon that name because I'm gonna come up with something else. Because I feel like as I've continued working on this sweater, I've come to find that the design is my own. Um, but let me give you a little bit of background on this sweater. So I started this sweater with the idea of taking bits and pieces of patterns, uh, sweater patterns that I've knit re recently that I enjoy, and piecing them together in what I was calling my Franken sweater. Um, you know, little bits of the Felix, little bits of the Magnolia Bloom, some, you know, inspiration from the uh, No Frills Pullover by Petite Knit, putting it all together in what I thought would become my ideal um, raglan pullover. And that is essentially what I did. However, there's a lot going on in this that is my own design outside of stitch counts perhaps from those particular patterns. And in a lot of cases, those stitch counts had to change for the fit of the garment. Um, and I've talked a lot about what I've done with this. In fact, there's a video just about what I have done. Uh, I've done more since this video, but there's a video that I'll link down below where I've talked a lot about what I did here. So I'm not gonna belabor that anymore um, until you know the sweater is finished. So I'm just gonna give you a little update on where I'm at with this so far. However, I do feel like a lot of the modifications I've made since are decisions that I've made based on, you know, design preference and fit and things like that, that I had to, I had to tweak or do something different. And so I'm going to give this sweater a name and I haven't really figured it out yet. Um, and I'm going to stop calling it my Franken sweater because it's very loosely based on these patterns now. I mean, I've, I did some, um, short row shaping from the Felix pullover, some stitch counts are similar to the Felix pullover, but that changed. Um, other than that, a lot of things are very similar, or other than that, a lot of things are kind of my own design choices. So I don't know, take from that with what you will. Okay, let's go ahead and let me show you where I'm at with this so far. So I'm gonna stand up to show this a little bit better. Okay, now you can see by looking at what I have so far that the sweater has obvious shaping going on. So there's a narrowing at the waist happening here. And I did that because, and this is another reason why I'm not 100% ready to turn anything like this into a pattern, because I realized that my stitch count was just too much. It was gonna be too wide on me and far too boxy in an unflattering kind of way. And I needed to get it down and narrow it down. And so I had to just do, you know, gradual decreases to bring it in. And then at the very bottom, right before doing my ribbed hem, I decreased again uh, a certain percentage of my stitches. And then I did my ribbed hem. And I like the way that it sits on my body. I think if I had to do something differently, if I wanted to go back, I would maybe make this a little less snug, but it's good. It's going to block out nicely. And I'm, I'm happy with the way that it sits on my body. And I've tried it on. I did a fit check on Instagram yesterday and I showed some photos. So you can see those photos here. I'll pop them up here so you can see. And I'm really happy with the way that it's fitting. And I feel like for... Um, you know, kind of like my first proper, you know, with some experience under my belt, improvised sweater, this is really nice. And it's something to be proud of. And it's something that I could develop further if I wanted to into a design. Um, but as it sits right now, it's kind of a jumping off point to that, if you will. One of the things that I did decide to do, and I'm happy that I did, but I need to kind of work on my technique a little bit, I think, is I did a three needle bind off for the hem. So because the collar of this is so lovely and thick and rounded, I wanted to make sure that the hemline kind of, 
I don't know, reflected that as well. And instead of doing just a regular bound off hemline, I wanted to have a nice rounded hemline. And so I did a three needle bind off, which is essentially gonna give you the same result or a similar look to a tubular cast on. It's actually called the tubular bind off. Um, so you can see there that it has like a really nice kind of rounded edge. And it was really simple to execute. This was not complicated. I feel like the tubular cast on is very complicated. I don't enjoy doing it. This, other than just taking time, you really just have to sit and give yourself some time to do it. It's not difficult at all. Once you figure out kind of the rhythm, it's super easy. It's essentially Kitchener stitching your stitches together. And I think that's hard to visualize because typically Kitchener stitching is like taking adjacent stitches and like putting them together like this. And that's kind of what you're doing here. And it's giving you a nice, you know, rounded edge. And I don't know, you know, what sorcery is involved in making that happen. I just know how to execute it and it works. And that's all that matters. <laughs> so that's what I did at the hemline of this sweater. And my needles are banging around all over things. It drives me crazy. Um, and I'm happy the, with the way that that came out. So that, that looks really nice. And I will be doing that on the sleeve cuffs as well. And speaking of sleeves, that is where I'm at at this point. So I just added um, my needle to the sleeves and I'm gonna begin working the sleeves. No shaping in the sleeves. I'm gonna just go ahead and let those be straight and then I'll decrease them down to a really nice cuff, giving them a little bit of kind of a curve at the end of the sleeve before it hits the cuff. I think it'll look really nice. So that is my former, you know, will we'll, the sweater formerly known as the Franken sweater. <laughs> Not sure what I'm gonna call it yet, but that's what I have so far. I'm enjoying the process. I'm gonna link down below to some resources for improvising a sweater, but I really recommend you watch that previous video that I just shared last Sunday because it's where I kind of break down not only what I had done up to that point, but also my thoughts on improvising and some resources that you can go um, see or check out to learn more about improvising a sweater. So that is that. I'm excited to make more progress. She shall be done the next time we see each other for the podcast. And that's going to be exciting. Okay. In terms of works in progress, those are pretty much all of them. I have one more I want to share with you, but I'm going to save that for now because I want part of that is something that I purchased while we were in Dallas on our trip last weekend. So like I mentioned, while we were there, I took a trip to knit Dallas and it's beautiful. I'm going to show you a quick video that I took while I was there. I posted this on my Instagram just to give you a little bit of an idea of what the shop looked like inside, but this yarn store was just an absolute treat. So here's a quick look at, um, Knit Dallas in Dallas, Texas. Okay, while we were there, I was fortunate enough to um, walk away with some really nice new yarn, a new knitting pattern book, and um, just a really overall great experience. And I want to mention before I tell you these things, I want to tell you the most special experience um, there, which honestly was like probably to me the highlight of the whole the whole experience being at that knit shop was that somebody recognized me um, from here from the podcast, and uh, that was so awesome. And this, this person, her name was Haley. Haley, if you happen to be watching the podcast right now, um, it was so lovely to meet you and thank you so much for saying hello. But she asked me, she's like, are you Taylor Earl from fiber for the people? And then she's like, I love your podcast. That's amazing. She's watched my podcast. It was just a really awesome experience for me. She was just very sweet. She was there with a friend and they were both very sweet and kind. Um, and, and I was so happy that she said hello to me because not only did it make my day that she recognized me from this podcast, but that she took the time to say hi to me and kind of put herself in that situation too. I mean, I feel like for me, that would take some, some, um, 
don't know, not courage, but like you just never know, right? And I don't know, it was really sweet. So that was the best takeaway from my visit to Knit Dallas and it made my day. So that was very special. Just thought I'd share that. Okay. I also wanted to share with you what I purchased from Knit Dallas. And I went, I came away with some yarn and I knew that when I purchased the yarn, I wanted it to be number one, a sweater quantity of yarn. I wanted to know that it was going to go towards um, a sweater and I wanted to have that pattern in mind. And I initially set out and, and actually the reason I purchased this book was because I saw the book. So this is Contrasts um, by Lina Publishing. And this is um, a beautiful Beautiful, like if anything, coffee table book for a knitter to have on hand. But the whole purpose of this is to kind of just emphasize texture and like finishing details and just really beautiful. It mentions a lot about like delicate feminine style, but just these really nice details that set you know, hand knitted garments apart. And I figured I wanted to have something like this in my collection because I think it's just a nice book to have around and to find inspiration within the pages. However, there was a pattern in here that I saw that was what kind of drove my search while I was at Knit Dallas um, in terms of like yarn and how much I would need or whatever. This is called the Maja. And it's categorized here as a bulky jacket. Let me go ahead and show you the photo in the book. I mean, come on. That is just so beautiful. It's classic. I love the texture. I mentioned on my recent video about um, knitting patterns for men that I really wanted to explore knitting more texture. And I really, really do. I've done a lot of just plain stockinette and I'm, I feel the urge to knit more texture and to and to get a different rhythm in my hands when I'm knitting and I saw this and I thought this is like a good balance and I'll pop a, pro a proper picture up here so you can see it but it has that really pretty texture on the front that you're getting there and that front paneling and that's knits and pearls um, and then it has your stockinette stitch for the rest of the body and then you've got your button band that keeps things interesting but I just I absolutely love this design. So that's what I was thinking I was going to be knitting with the yarn that I purchased from Knit Dallas. However, all of that changed. I will be knitting that cardigan, just not with this yarn. And I'm still trying to figure out from what I have in my stash what I will be knitting that with, but it's not going to be this Kelborn Woolens yarn because I want to knit with this sweater number 18 by um, My Favorite Things Knitwear. I think, so I have been eyeballing this sweater for quite some time. I will pop it up so you can see it. And this sweater that you're seeing on the screen right now, this is a mohair pairing, obviously because of that halo that you see. I mean, you can see that there is this really gorgeous halo and I love that. I think it looks beautiful. However, I think that the texture on this sweater would look stunning with a really neppy and rustic tweed yarn like this one, plus, I also think that that texture is going to add some heft, but because this is a woolen spun yarn, I'm going to have, you know, a lighter weight fabric. Now here's my problem. I don't think I'll have enough of this. I'm going to need to order more of this yarn if I want to knit that sweater with this yarn. And I really do. So if I'm going to use this to knit sweater number 18 by my favorite things knitwear, I'm going to need more. That is a sweater I definitely want to knit. So if it's not going to be this yarn, it's going to be some other yarn, but I really love that sweater in this yarn. So that's my goal with my lucky tweed. Let's hope I get lucky finding some more of this in the same dye lot. And honestly, even if I can't find it in the same dye lot, I think I could probably get away with just having one additional skein and, you know, I don't know, like just using it at the bottom of the sweater or uh, alternating my skeins, whatever. We can figure it out. I have a little bit more yarn in this little bag and this little bag I just picked up at Barnes and Noble last night. Um, it was kind of like a date night my husband and I had. We just went out to get something to eat and then we went to the bookstore and I purchased this bag there. This is by um, Cavallini and Company, which is based out of San Francisco. And they have the coolest, um, like they're the ones that do like those paper diagram, or uh, I don't know, like graphic, what do you call it? Like that shows all the different breeds of butterflies and different types of flowers. They do those papers that you can get at Paper Source. That's what this company is. And they're just these little bags with really awesome, you know, prints on them. 
this one in particular is just a camping print, like a vintage camping print, and I love it um, with a little leather zipper pull. But the reason I purchased this is because I wanted a bag that was going to fit two little balls of sock yarn, nice and snug, so that when I'm knitting a pair of socks two at a time, the little balls of yarn don't get like jostled around, they stay in place. And you guys, this fit the bill perfectly. So you can see in here, how nice and snug is a bug in a rug, everything is situated. These are two balls of Biche Bouche Petite Lamb's Wool. Here is the color that I'm knitting, or excuse me, the color that I purchased. I purchased two balls of this at Knit Dallas. Isn't that just the most beautiful mossy green color? This is color, I don't wanna pull these all the way out. Dark green gray. Okay, I would have definitely given a more like romantic colorway name, but that's fine because it's beautiful. I love it. And I'm knitting a pair of socks. Now, I was planning on knitting the Wildflower and Honeycomb socks by This Handmade Life. But then when I got done with the ribbing, I was thinking, you know, why not come up with your own design? Why not, meaning, why not come up with something on your own? Why follow a pattern? Let's, you know, I'm already improvising a sweater. Let's kind of stick with that and try my own little design for my socks. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm really happy that I chose to do that. So I can't really tell you what I'm doing here because it's not finished yet. And I can't direct you to a pattern yet, but unlike what I mentioned about my sweater earlier, this is something that should it work out to be as beautiful as I think it's going to be, I will release this as a pattern because it's a sock. It doesn't require quite as much, um, you know, planning and all of that. And hold on, I think I might have discovered a drop stitch. No, I think I'm all right, hold on. Let me just make quite certain. No, we're good, okay, whew, dodged a bullet on that one. Okay, so anyway, these are my Biche Bouche socks. How about we call them that for right now? This is what I have so far. You're not gonna be able to see too much because the yarn is pretty dark, but it's gonna be a really beautiful lace design. And I love it. And I love the way that these are knitting up. I, um, I just did kind of like a four centimeter cuff depth before I moved into the rest of the pattern. You can kind of see that lace design working up there. But you guys, I promise you, these are going to be stunning. I've already charted out the motif um, and I, I'm going to make so much progress on these super fast because I was working on these before sitting down to film and I was having that like, oh, I'm just going to do one more repeat, one more repeat. But yeah, these are just, I love them. I love them so much. Okay, the last thing that I want to share with you guys today, this is something that I picked up um, online. I saw this while scrolling through Instagram. I was thinking I would like to have something separate from my big notions bag that I can hold my tapestry needles in that can be available to me, but that's not going to have my tapestry needles like jingling around. So I saw this particular thing on Instagram and it just immediately stuck out to me as the perfect solution. And you guys... It is beautiful. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it and then I'll open it up and show you a little bit more in detail. But here it is. This is by Jezebel B. She does a lot of project bags and cases in the most beautiful textiles and leather and her work is fabulous. And this is just a very small yet beautiful example of that. This is whole grain leather. The stitching is beautiful. The brass grommets are such a nice detail and you can see her logo stamped in the middle right here. This is a holder for tapestry needles. Now wait till you see the inside of this because it's so cool. Look at that, isn't that neat? It's a real thick piece of wool felt stitched down over the leather and it's a place where you can stick your tapestry needles through creating a hole in the felt that you can use again and again to hold them and it holds them in place beautifully. But I love this little kind of addition to my tools and my cases. It makes me feel, you know, all grown up when I reach for my tapestry needles and I have this really nice case to hold them in. And the craftsmanship is beautiful. And I know that this collection here um, that this is included in is called the La Rouge Collection. And she provided a little card with some information and it says, this collection was inspired by Jeanette Bold Bolduc my grandmother. She was a redhead and everybody called her La Rouge. She had a great influence in my life. She's the reason I get to live my passion and it's my way to pay her tribute. And so this is just the little card 
And that's a picture of her grandmother. And this little case is um, inspired by that. And I thought that was really cool. So if you need a nice place to hold your tapestry needles, look no further. I think that this is such a nice little investment. It's, it's nice to look at. It's nice to reach for when you need it. And she has so many other project bags um, made with high quality materials, some of them which are vegan and some of which are leather, but just really high quality craftsmanship. Definitely recommend it. I will link to her shop down below and I'll link to that in particular as well if you are interested. It has been a joy spending this time with you guys today chatting about the progress I've made on these projects. I'm excited to make more progress. If you have any thoughts on any of the things that I shared here today, let me know down in the comments. I just love having the opportunity to sit down and relax and just chat. If you enjoyed yourself today or took any value from this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. So until we meet again, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.